and we're back with FF7, and we're going to get some rest, and I'm sure nothing important will happen over the night. You know, this seems like just a good time to relax, kick back, no big deal. Huh, it's nighttime. I feel it. What's wrong? Are you sick? Eris is here. And so is Sephiroth. What? Sephiroth's here too? But how can you tell? It's not an excuse. I feel it in my soul. What, what should we do? We must hurry to her. Right. Let's hurry and find Eris. All right. Nighttime. Good job reshading. And I think we want to go in here. I am wrong. This is not where I wanted to go. I'm sort of freezing up between screens a little oddly today. I wonder why that is. Like it pauses there? Eris's voice. Coming from there? Ah, uh, yes. It does make sense to always be the, you know, the secret area is in the central place. That is how kind of design works. Yeah, really uh, weirdly long loading time between screens today. I'm very slightly worried about that, but probably not a big deal. That one was cleaner. And that, that door we couldn't access earlier is now a path. Nice sort of sky waterish stairway. I like it. Again, this game does a really nice job of having dramatic locations. And often not ones they're like gonna reuse or anything, right? Just one time here's a here's something that's gonna really increase whatever's going on and the tension of it. So, Eris is here, Sephiroth is here, we're here, it is the end of disc one. Big jump. God, I love the jumps in this game, they're so silly. Eris? Now, every time Cloud has said, you wait here so far, it's been a little suspicious. This is like in, like, I don't know, some generic movie, like, the damsel in distress, where, like, we'll leave you behind in the town while we go do the thing. And, like, of course, when they come back, she's been kidnapped, right? And I think there's a thing, especially of games from this era, of, like, any time they split up the party, we should be highly suspicious of why the game wants to do that. Uh, that said, you know, let's, let's not be suspicious. Let's, let's trust and have faith and see what's coming for us. Looking weird, Cloud. Alright, let's go talk to Eris. Why is your sword out? Can I leave? No. Oh, that looks like me trying to fight against something. So if I press up, this happens. If I press down, left, right. Triangle doesn't do anything. I can shake. But at some point, I gotta press X. And now it all changes, but... I don't have other things to do. Are we gonna kill Eris? Cloud should not have come on his own. Every time Cloud's gone off on his own, it's, I'll go get the Black Materia. I guess Eris came with him, but, you know, still the other character stayed behind. Every time Cloud goes off on his own, he does not... He does not do well. Cloud, stop! What, what are you making me do? What 
Hello, Eric. He smiled. And there's Sakharov. And he smiles too. As her hair comes undone, we see an orb fall. A materia. And we know she has a special materia. She told us the very first time we met her. It's special because it does absolutely nothing at all. Now it's gone. <laughs> into the water. Eris. This can't be real. So I want to go back to the Kate Sith scene for a moment. Kate Sith is going to die, but it's just Kate Sith one, right? It's just one. They can just be a new puppet. The new puppet shows up almost immediately. And yet we get this overwrought scene where Kate Sith has final moments with all the with the characters who are there. Kate Sith goes in. Kate Sith talks to the camera. I hope you'll remember me. You know, we'll always have, you know, all this writing just to, like, have it be meaningful, right? The game is telling you we can build up. We can tell you this is really important and have it obviously trivially be not important. The game is telling you your party is safe. Even when we dramatize the shit out of this like non-important death of a traitor to your party, it's it's nothing to worry about. And then this death is very quick. We get a scene of Cloud raising a sword, but that's basically it. She's there, and then immediately she's dead. And I think that really helps make the kind of power of some kind of parallel here, right? Where one not real death is, is this exaggerated, you have time to say goodbyes, all that. And then the other one is sudden and harsh and just as shocking to the player as to the characters involved just as immediate and sudden and unprepared for. And that's part of, I think, why this is such a powerful scene for so many people. Obviously, most people aren't, like, thinking about the Kate Sith non-death when they get to the scene. But I think it's part of... I think it is a nice contrast with the suddenness and bleakness of this killing, right? And so I actually think it's a pretty important part of the game that most people think is kind of stupid, because I think it parallels really effectively with this scene. And we will now get some lines. We will now get emotion and stuff that we, we didn't get there, but the player can join in it because it was so sudden and surprising in a way they couldn't for Kate Sith's, which was neither sudden nor surprising, nor about a character we're invested in, right? This scene is everything that scene wasn't, and I think that it really, like, showcases... It's not just that people like Eris and don't like Kate Sith. That's not the only difference here. It's a big one. It's a really important one. But it's not the only difference here, and that scene really shows they knew what they were doing differently in this scene to make it so effective. On the other hand, I'm not an Eris fan, so I was never too far. This can't be real. Do not worry. Soon the girl will become part of the planet's energy. All that is left is to go north. The promised land waits for me over the snowy fields. There, I will become a new god, maybe, by uniting with the planet, as will this girl. Shut up. 
The cycle of nature and your stupid plan don't mean a thing. Eris is gone. Eris will no longer talk, no longer laugh, cry, or get angry. What about us? What are we supposed to do? What about my pain? My fingers are tingling. My mouth is dry. My eyes are burning. What are you saying? Are you trying to tell me you have feelings too? Of course. Who do you think I am? Ha ha ha. Stop acting as if you were sad. There's no need to act as though you're angry either. Because cloud, you are. Boss fight. I guess we'll never find out. We will find out. Uh, so I guess Tifa will start by stealing, just to check. Uh, let's throw up big guard, because that was incredible. Uh, that, okay, that does do damage. Lunatic Kai will give us permanent speed boost, feels worth getting out at the start of a fight. And Tifa will punch. Oh, it misses, because we already had haste from big guard. Yeah, good point. Is it weak to bio? I think this one is not weak to bio. Uh, let's see if how much damage death blow does. I think this is one of the few bosses not weak to bio. Now, blue light... Cloud might just absorb that. Yeah, he does. Alright, maybe not death blow. Should do double damage, so we can figure out what it does from normal attack. Uh, I think cloud... Is this that too? Yeah, the game really does give you equipment that is very uh, relevant to reducing damage from this boss. And for some reason it really wants to hit Cloud and it's just not going to be able to. The boss, incidentally, is um, Genova, again. Uh, each time we've seen Sephiroth, and this is important to keep in mind, uh, the boss we fought, if there's been a boss, has been Genova. And that's a little odd. Uh, I might throw out a heal at some point here, but obviously not really needed. Nope, definitely not needed after that attack. God, Tifa's so good. 1200 damage. Look at these other plebs. Obviously she got a critical there, but we've upped her critical. You know, we've upped her luck. Ooh, they got two turns in a row. All right, maybe it is time to heal. Let's use Cure 2, just to make sure we get well healed. I might keep Nanaki ready to heal, just in case it's needed. But basically this boss can't hurt Cloud, which, you know, slight advantage for us. Ah, uh, Aqualung, that's going to need a big heal after. Yeah, okay. So, it turns out... Can't hurt Cloud, but can really hurt the rest of the party. But keep attacking Cloud, please. Um, okay, I might run low on Phoenix Downs here. Nanaki has life, I think. Hopefully this goes for Cloud. Nope. Come on, man. We do have haste up. You know, we can't lose this fight. It cannot hurt Cloud. But I would like to get experience on the others. But it really is being rude here. Huh. Yeah. So I'm going to wait for it to start throwing its move. Maybe Cloud will get all the experience here. But we're going to heal Nanaki and hopefully not a dick again. Okay. Got Cure 2 off. Oh, and I shouldn't have used an item, because Nanaki has it doesn't have to. That was a bit of a waste. But um, as long as it doesn't hit Tifa here, maybe we can stabilize. Yeah. Alright. Well, that got, that got a little tricky for a moment. Being mean. Oddly, we haven't had a single limit break this fight. But Tifa does so much damage doesn't matter. 
All right, glad to get experience on everyone. Yeah, a really, um, because you are, says Genova, interestingly, not Sephiroth, a puppet. What have we learned about Cloud so far? Does this mean something to us? We know that Sephiroth has some ability to take control of Cloud. Or Genova does. One of kind of the Sephiroth Genova duo has some power over Cloud. Cloud gave the Black Materia out of his control. Cloud raised his sword to kill Eris out of his control, clearly, though this time without the um the kid watching, essentially, which we got with the Black Materia. Cloud is controllable, and we don't know why that is. There are some hints we've gotten and some things we could piece together, but I don't think we have the information yet to be super confident on those, so I'm going to hold off talking about that, I think. So I guess that's all I have. we have to say on this so far. There is some other stuff we could be piecing together out there, but I think that's... I think basically we've seen stuff that this fits with but not why this would be or what it means, besides that Cloud can be controlled. What it tells us about Cloud or Cloud's past, I think, is not clear. And it's a kind of weird thing to say, because we know a lot of Cloud's past, and even though Tifa's been a little skeptical of his telling of it, um, like, she remembered the promise as kids, right? Like, we know, we, we have a strong, we, Vincent told us, that Sephiroth was created five years ago. But obviously Cloud wasn't, right? Sephiroth is artificial in a way that Cloud is not artificial, which makes being a puppet a kind of strange thing, a strange thought here. I'm a puppet. Howls. saying their goodbyes. Uh, everyone goes, I want to use a Phoenix Down, but I'm almost out of Phoenix Downs. It would be my last Phoenix Down. Can we risk our last Phoenix Down on Eris? Uh, we see Tifa crying as she runs off there. I mean, of course we can, but... Um. Now, some people say General Leo is the first really shocking like death in the series, but General Leo is nowhere as developed or important a character. And also... Eris is the special character in your party, right? The one that is the last of the ancients, the one that is a Cetra, the one that all kind of the clues of how stories work tells us she is important and the most important, excluding the main character, but possibly even including Cloud, that she's the most important character in the game and in the story. She's the one from the special race, the special group. Again, these scenes are done very nicely. I'm a little sorry to be talking over it, but I think people will be familiar. And well done, well, like, camera work, does it work? Um, story spending time kind of in silence with pain is, I think, a valuable, powerful thing with grief. But returning to my point, whatever it was, every story cue says Eris is the most important center of the story, or one center of the story, but a really important one. And that's never the case with General Leo. Uh, spoilers for FF6. Uh, there's also Galoof in FF5, which I actually think is the closer and better analogy to this one, but a lot more people have played FF6 than played FF5, especially in the US. Um, and for instance, I played FF6 multiple times before it ever completed FF5. Uh, but I think Galoof is the better analogy here and the more important death. FF4, you could sort of say has some, but not really. Uh, so I would say Galoof is the first, and there's this streak of Galoof, General Leo, and Eris. And I think, and I say this as someone who Eris has never appealed to much to me, this is obviously the most powerful of the trio. 
and the most both shocking to a player and feeling like everything in the world has changed. And I like Galoof more, but it's not it's not the same kind of thing. There's there's a reason this is so iconic and important to people. Uh, I, I think it's because it's very well done. Everyone, listen to me. I'm Cloud, ex-soldier, born in Nibelheim. I came to settle up with Sephiroth. What's going on? I came here by my own free will, or so I thought. However, to tell the truth, I'm afraid of myself. There is a part of me that I don't understand. That part that made me give the black material to Sephiroth. If you hadn't stopped me, Eris might have been. There's something inside of me, a person who is not really me. That's why I should quit this journey. Before I do something terrible. Now we already had a bit of this scene in Gongaga, but now he has something worse. And he's now making the choice for himself. So this is really different than what we saw in Gongaga, where he was saying there, I can't continue. I don't understand what I am. I have to stop. Please tell me I'm doing okay. Please tell me I'm all right. If you tell me I have to go, please tell me I have purpose. Please tell me what to do. And now he's going, this is even worse. I almost did something. Not like worse in maybe the broader sense, because the black materia is pretty destructive to all the world, but worse in a personal sense. And yet Cloud is now able to make a choice on his own. Though he's shaking while doing it. But I am going. He destroyed my hometown five years ago, killed Eris, and is now trying to destroy the planet. I'll never forgive Sephiroth. Now, I will complain here. I never like the terminology about forgiving, because the point of someone with power, and I know people love to make things personal and about like my personal forgiveness, but it isn't. It's just not. When it comes to power, the world is not about forgiveness. It's not about like, do we forgive what they did? No, it's not even our place to forgive. We're not the one they killed, right? The survivors forgiving seems to me, at best, like an insult. Like, it's, it's not our place to forgive. And the important thing isn't to forgive. It's to try to do the good you can and stop the bad you can. So there's so much writing that in a pivotal, important scene like this will make it about whether we'll forgive. And that's not the point. That's not the understanding we should have from these scenes. This might be a bad translation, but I think it's also just a very common cliche. And I think it's a bad cliche that this game is taking part in here. The rest of this scene I like a lot, and I like the writing of a lot. I, I must go on. And I like seeing Cloud unable to make the choice in a previous scene, and now able to. Right? In these paralleled scenes. Again, the game has a lot of scenes that make natural pairs. I think it's one of the cleverly ways it's put together. We see Kate Sith's totally trivial, meaningless death, and we see Eris's very real, sudden, not over-dramatized one. We see Cloud breaking down and needing affirmation from others, and needing others to tell him things are okay, and then we see Cloud knowing they're not okay, and knowing he still has to act and making that choice on his own. I think there's a lot of pairs like of scenes like this happening now that I think are really, really effective and a nice way to um, show character. And they could be done in a way where it feels unearned or false. And I don't think that's the case here. I think these are really powerfully well done scenes. And yeah, again, don't like the forgiveness line, but everything else here I'm pretty all in on. I have a favor to ask of you. Will you all come with me to save me from doing something terrible? But this time it's not, will you tell me I'm okay? Like, will you give me things to do? It's, I have to do things. And if you will be kind enough to come with me, I want you to be there, perhaps to kill me if need be. All right, Cloud. I don't know how Eris tried to save the planet from Meteor. 
and I guess now we'll never know. But we still have a chance. We must get that black materia back before Sephiroth uses it. Let's go. Curious that all the lines there were given to a Red 13, basically not Tifa. We're going to save and stop here rather than move on to disc 2 because this feels like a nice stopping point. But I bet whoever was in the player 2 slot got the lines there. Obviously Tifa would have made a little more sense to get those lines. But again, a way of a lot of this game is written is kind of whoever is character 2 or character 2 and 3 each get a given line and they will say it in order. So next time I have access to the PHS, I'll probably flip their order because Tifa's, Tifa's lines are going to be more story relevant here. And I'm going to switch. Yeah, well, actually, this is as good a place as I need to stop. Uh, big events. A uh, lot happens at the end of disc one. And I think nicely done on a lot of levels, both really important to a bunch of characters really dramatic in that we see where the plot is going and we see the plot occurring with significant effect on the characters. Uh, some people like to separate plot from story, is like plot is what happens to the characters in the story and story is what happens to you as you perceive it. Story is how it comes to you, plot is what happens to them. And I think, again, the parallel of Eris and Kate Sith's deaths Eris's death comes just as suddenly to us, the player, uh, to us, the player, as it does to the characters in it, and I think just as effectively, in general. Again, I say this is not an Eris fan. I'm trying to slightly lean into people that are, um, but even as someone who isn't, again, I like the scene a lot, and yeah, I think there's a lot of ways this game makes the sort of plot and story converge well. And some of that's graphical decisions. Some of that's like the Temple of the Ancients feeling like such a strange place puts you there in this clearly strange place, right? It evokes what it needs to evoke for the experience for you to feel similar to what the plot says it should be. I think the game does a really compelling job of that. And that's the end of disc one. Uh, this is a three disc game. Like many games of the era, the final disc is mostly just end game. Side quests plus final dungeon, and that's about it. So disc two is the meat of the rest of the game. Disc two, in my opinion, is not quite as strong as disc one. But like discs one, it has parts that are faster and more effective, and parts that are weaker. And the most memorable scenes in the game for me are in disc two. So I'm really looking forward to playing disc two as well. Uh, probably the biggest drawback to disc two, and we'll, we'll talk about this, is you have less party member selection. And I like to be able to use the team I've chosen. And I don't want to have party members forced on me. And that's going to be a little more the case in disc two, which makes it a little bit more of a, a slog for me to play through. But we'll stop there for now. Big, big happening.